So it's, uh, it's about 10 o'clock a little bit after, and I just wanted to get us started and, and uh, keep us on time. And I want to welcome everyone to the 19th annual summit. This will be the 19th year uh, that we have uh, this um, uh, you know, meeting of people who are interested in online teaching and learning here in SUNY. Um, so we've been doing it for a while. <laughs> um, let me see, you know, from who's here uh, at this time, how many people are here for the first time. There's people I don't recognize. All right, welcome. Um, and how about faculty? How many people are faculty who are in the audience? And instructional designers are people who support online faculty? Yeah. And how about administrators? In the audience. Yep, we can see, you know, you can leave your hand up, right? <laughs> Lots of different roles. Any librarians in the group? Technologists, faculty developers, any other online support folks like our help desk, for example? <laughs> um, how about any students, any online students in the room or have been online students? <laughs> Very good, very good. Um, how about any non-SUNY people in the room? Rob, you have to raise your hand. <laughs> okay, all right. So I know throughout the day and throughout the morning and throughout the week, we're gonna have more and more people cycle in and out, um, but I'm hoping that you will um, have the opportunity to network with the folks that are here. This is an amazing community of online practitioners at all different levels with all different um, uh, years of experience. There's some who are just new and just starting out and some of us who have been here for more than 20 years. And so I want to welcome you to New York, to the Global Center, to the summit, and I hope you have a very, very good and productive um, conference listening to the amazing speakers that we have lined up for us to, um, this week. I want to thank Kim Scalzo. Um, and the Open SUNY staff, the ATIS staff, for all of their support for this event. And, um, and I'd like to have you meet them if you haven't met. Um, can, can you raise your hands, um, Open SUNY folks and staff? Um, for those of you who may not have yet had the opportunity to meet um, some of the folks who work behind the scenes, um, on your behalf, I'd like to have you um, meet them and at some point during the conference, maybe um, you can over coffee or over a Danish or lunch or something, have the opportunity to chat with uh, this very committed group of, of individuals. Um, I want to thank Anthony and the Global Center for their hospitality here. Um, Laura um, Murray is our um, photographer extraordinaire and um, the slideshow that we had this morning was from uh, last year, and she, we will be updating those photos throughout the event, and um, you will find beautiful f photographs of yourself among the slides uh, for this year. <laughs> she is an amazing photographer uh, and really captures the spirit um, of the event. Uh, so thanks, Laura. And Nancy, I can see you out there. Can you? <laughs> uh, Nancy Motondo from the CPD. Um, this event would not be possible without her and without the support of the Center for Professional Development. So I want to thank her and, uh, and the CPD staff for all of their logistical support for the event. Um, I also want to recognize um, a team that I put together this year. Uh, um, I called it the Summit Check-In Team. And these were a few folks that I um, called in to help me um, think about the summit and to review the um, agenda and the speakers with them. And I see Mark McBride out there getting his lanyard, and Mark is on that um, on that team. Larry Dugan was also on that group. Ann Reed from UB, Michelle Fort from our office, um, John Locke from Plattsburgh was also on that group. Uh, Chris Price from the CPD, Kathleen Gradle from Fredonia, Christine Page from ESC, Jeff Ryman from FIT, Camille Carlson 
um, who I know is here. I just saw her. Hi, Camille, from Farmingdale. Debbie Spiro from NASA. I know you're here, too. Debbie, there you are. And uh, Wendy Tang from Stony Brook and Vicki Sloan from Clinton. Vicki, are you here yet? She's not here yet. So I just wanted to thank and recognize that group for giving me some insight and input into, um, into the events of the, of the day. I also wanted to ask anyone who's on the Open SUNY Advisory Board to stand up and, and just let people know who you are. Um, Larry's the chair. Okay, so I also, you know, as you um, go about your, your couple of days here with us, um, uh, you should... Um, you know, check in with them and see how they're doing and, and what they're doing and, and, um, and learn more about the um, Open SUNY Advisory Group. Um, okay, now it says show a slide. So I wanted to also, uh, today we're going to be recognizing the Open SUNY on, uh, online teaching ambassadors, and I know there are a couple in the room right now. So if you are an online ambassador being recognized this year, would you raise your hand? Welcome and congratulations on this very well-deserved recognition, and we're looking forward to recognizing you more formally a little bit later today. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I also want to thank um, the Open SUNY community participants and all the presenters. Um, we made um, an effort, as we do every year, to reach out to the community, to all the different roles that are involved in online teaching and learning, um, and, uh, and to have them um, um, encouraged and represented here among the talks that we're giving and, um, and obviously um, also <coughs> among the, um, the at attendees of, of the conference, the participants of the conference. So thank you very much for coming, for taking time out of your week and out of your uh, work schedule to be with us for this really important professional development activity. It's the one time in the year where we all get together face to face um, to think about and share and network and to have a face to face activity for our um, online community of practice. So thank you all for being here. You may know that when we're in New York, we are members of the National University Technology Network and the Newton Board um, is here in New York having their annual board meeting and they will uh, be uh, participating in the conference on Thursday and Friday and actually have organized the activities um, on Friday around their core values, which are networking, leadership, and mentoring. And it's really an effort to, to engage and network with the folks on the board the, and the Newton community and to demonstrate those core values in a, a, a real practical way. And so we have a number of uh, presentations and activities and events planned for um, Friday that have been um, coordinated by the National University Technology Network. And so we're very excited to have them with us. They will be joining us for our um, meals. And I'm hoping that you will have the opportunity to meet them and network with them and, um, and learn more about what they're doing. Uh, they're for folks from all across the country. And in fact, um, this year we have uh, two people from Australia and one from Newfoundland who are uh, part of the Newton board that are here. And so it's very interesting. Kevin Bell, you may remember, who used to be at Northwestern, is now at a university in, uh, in Australia. Australia and is doing some really fabulous um, and interesting things there. So I hope you have the chance to meet some of the folks on the Newton board and network with them. Um, I wanted to mention that if you are here and you have not yet officially signed up as an Open SUNY Fellow, I would invite you to do so. Hi, Meg. Um, I, uh, the, the URL is right here. It's very easy and low barrier. You just put in your name and your email address, and then um, you will be in whatever role that you have uh, selected as an Open SUNY Fellow. This simply gives us the opportunity to send communications to you about some of the um, activities and events and resources that we have available. Um, it's the only way, really, that we have to be able to uh, reach out directly to, to, to reach you, and so I'm hoping and, and inviting you to, to join. Um, 
I wanted to mention the virtual audience. This uh, event is always streamed live and for free. There is no registration and so necessary. So if you have colleagues or friends, whether they're in SUNY or outside of SUNY, that might be interested in any of the presentations um, this week, I'd invite you to share the link with them. Um, <clears throat> the link, let me see, is... I don't know where the link is. Um, it's on the main website, and it says live recordings. Um, and so maybe, Erin, you can tweet it out so that folks can, uh, can see it. Um, so I just wanted to thank the virtual attendees for attending. I know that you're out there. I know we have a number of ambassadors, for example, that weren't able to travel here today uh, physically that will be tuning in later today and maybe throughout the conference. And so I just wanted to um, acknowledge the virtual audience. And um, the hashtag uh, for the summit um, is Open SUNY Summit. And uh, if you have questions or um, uh, or anything, you know, throughout the event, um, you can use that hashtag. We also set up this year for the first time a Slido, and the information for the Slido is here, and that's both for the virtual attendees as well as for those of you here um, in the room, where if there is a question that you have as a, uh, a conversation is happening, as a presentation is happening, you can post the question in the Slido, and we'll review that when it's time for question and answer. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm trying to think. There was something else I had in my mind, and I can't remember what it was. It'll come to me. I wanted to acknowledge the Twitter team uh, for this year, and Erin Maney in particular. Erin, you want to raise your hand? She's our community manager, and Willow Harris is also back there. there we have the whole Twitter and, and uh, an Open SUNY team back there. Chrissy Mitchell is on the, the group, Ian August. Um, is here somewhere. Uh, there you are. <laughs> um, Willow, Dan, Kristen Mueller is also helping out with the, with the team this year. Um, Alexis Clifton, is she here? I haven't seen her yet. Um, and obviously I'll be tweeting too as I, as I can. So I just wanted to thank that, the Twitter team for helping us with the virtual engagement as well as with the promotion of the event in social media. And you can contribute to that yourselves by using that hashtag OpenSUNYCoat. And if by chance you take any photographs um, during, um, you know, and post them anywhere, if you use the Open SUNY, uh Summit hashtag, then we can aggregate those together and, and have a nice big um, you know, crowdsourced group of photos. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Uh, oh, um, is voting closed, Erin, for the effective practices? All right, we're going to be talking about the effective practices awards uh, later today. Um, here are some links, um, and I'll post these. You don't need to, you know, um, worry about, the, um, you know, having them. I'll post these links. Um, there are badges that we have available and we'll be distributing um, as a result of this event the commemorative summit badge. Um, we'll be giving uh, badges to the ambassadors. The speakers will all get um, testimonials and, and badges and then we will be um, issuing some badges for our effective practice uh, award winner. Um, I wanted to mention the uh, on-session, uh, which we'll, we will be doing tomorrow. Um, and that's where you have three minutes. Everyone in the room will have three minutes to come up and talk about something cool that they're doing on their campus. And there is a bit.ly there. Um, it's a Google Doc. You can go there and sign up. We'll do it in order of people who are signed up. So you put your name and a couple links of what you want to share. And then uh, tomorrow we will go um, through the list and have people come up and talk about the cool things that they're doing on, the, uh, on their campus or some, something that you're doing doing that you want to share with the group. Um, I want you to feel comfortable here. Um, uh, the restrooms are right out to the right. There will be um, coffee and snacks and stuff here out to the left. Take a break whenever you need to. We will have some networking breaks, but I just want you to feel comfortable and, and at home here. A couple of little housekeeping things um, before I ask Jeremy to come up for a sec. Um, the chancellor will be here tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. So I am encouraging you. This is a rare, you know, 
first opportunity for us to meet the chancellor. Um, th I'm thrilled that she uh, will be here to, uh, to talk with us. And so I encourage you to be here tomorrow morning um, on time because she is on a schedule. <laughs> um, and, um, and then I also wanted to mention that I have some, um, you know, kind of unfortunate news, but I also have some really, really good news. Um, unfortunately, John Seeley Brown has had a me medical emergency. He was our keynote speaker, and he's unable to travel to the summit and unable to present. And he was scheduled for um, midday or so tomorrow. Um, so that's the unfortunate news, and we're very sad um, to hear about his um, his surgery and hoping he, that he has a very speedy recovery. Um, but the, the applesauce that we're making out of it is that um, we get an hour of uh, playtime, extra playtime in New York City tomorrow. So we'll be moving everything up uh, just an hour after after lunch, and we'll be getting out of here, uh, you know, probably a little bit earlier than, than we had originally planned. Um, now, uh, before I finish off these opening remarks, I want to invite Jeremy uh, Case to come up to talk about our video um, project that we're doing this year. As you know, every year we um, use this opportunity of when we're all here together to focus on some issues um, and capture um, the collective thinking of the group on particular themes or issues. And so I'm going to introduce Jeremy Case, who will talk to you a little bit about what we're doing this year. Hi, uh, this is, I believe, the fourth year that we've been doing this, that we've been uh, taping interviews at the summit. And uh, as I look around the room, there's a bunch of you that I, I know I've already interviewed in previous years. Um, and we do a little bit of different theme each year in terms of what we want to talk to people about. Uh, this year's theme is we're looking at... Um, online course review, and really the implementation of online course review. And so we want to we want to talk to IDs, we want to talk to uh, online learning administrators, and we also want to talk to faculties, kind of get the faculty perspective on this as well. And uh, so we have a space set up here in the SUNY Center, uh, actually up on the second floor there. It's in kind of a, like a glass room. You'll see, you'll see all the lights and camera and everything set up in there. Um, and we'll be, uh, you, you're welcome to come up on your own. We'll also be uh, kind of grabbing people uh, as the conference goes along. Um, so you'll probably be grabbed by either Aaron or Dan Feinberg or myself uh, and uh, brought up there, and I'd like to thank everybody in advance. It's, it's really been a pleasure over the years to be able to do these interviews and to hear what you guys have to say and uh, to really learn about stuff from you guys. And, and I also want to stress, too, that so that's our theme for the year, but uh, also we are open to anything interesting that you guys feel like talking about that... Uh, that might be enlightening for people in general. Oh, and then what happens with the videos, in case you have not seen them before, is that they go on to the, um, the Open SUNY uh, YouTube presence there, and um, we uh, use a Creative Commons license for them uh, so that other folks can have access to them as well. And um, so it becomes kind of... Uh, part of the collective knowledge that's out there. So thank you very much, and uh, you'll know who I am when I come up to you. I want to introduce myself, so you know who I am when I come up to you and uh, ask you if you want to be on camera for us. So thank you very much. Thanks, Jeremy. I want to make sure to mention that one of um, the things that we're also collecting this year are um, uh, videos of the online ambassadors. This is one of your opportunities to share your enthusiasm for online learning um, and for being here in person. We'd really like to invite you to um, to be interviewed to share some of your enthusiasm, um, sort of more permanently. That you know, in, in terms of having a video that we can show, um, and any of the speakers also that would be interested in talking about something um, that we could capture. We'd love to have any of you be. Interested interviewed as well. Um, glasses. Uh, I think I'm done. Um, I um, wanted to... <laughs> 
Um, so I think without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our um, first presentation. Um, and um, I'm sure that you, if you have not um, yet met Kim or Larry, um, uh, well, here, here they are, Kim and Larry. <laughs> um, and we're, they're going to start us off today uh, talking about envisioning the future of Open SUNY. Again, welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. If you need anything, just let me know. Um, have a great uh, conference, and I'll turn it over to you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alex. So the, uh, the conference we want to kick off this time. Um, last year or so, uh, Kim asked me if I would step back into the role of chair of the Open SUNY Advisory, now council, um, and put together, now that the, the, the transition has come to Open SUNY, put together a group that we could have as representative uh, of people across SUNY um, that are going to help uh, advise, not lead, not run, not uh, be the bosses of uh, Open SUNY, but, but merely be the voice of the community. Um, and that's what we've done. Uh, we've put together a group of people, about 15 or so, uh, that represent everything from CAOs, CFOs, to instructional designers, to faculty um, uh, from across SUNY that are, are giving advice and, and giving information to the leadership team of Open SUNY as they create their, um, uh, their uh, strategic plan for the next few years. Um, and so in order to do that, we are a representative group. Um, one of the things we've done today and we're going to talk about is how do we give that advice? How do we help uh, them uh, make the path forward? You know, we're going to hear from a lot of people while we're here. I see Peter's here and Meg and Tanya is going to be here talking about, and, and Kristen, talking about data, talking about the 30,000 foot level. Um, but you're going to hear soon how you can have your voice. Um, so to give you the history of what we're doing and, and a little bit more about that, I'm going to introduce Kim and turn it over to her for a little bit and then come back and uh, kind of run that project. Yep. Do you want to do this next slide? Oh, yeah, we did this. So what is it going to be like? What's it going to be like today? We're not going to sit here and talk at you because in, in our world we know that that's probably one of the worst ways uh, to present information and to get information from our group. Uh, it's not going to be a stand-up presentation. We're going to participate, but we're going to talk a little bit in the beginning, just so you have some background information, right? Um, it's not an unsession. Alan, Alex has got the unsession thing nailed, right? So it's not going to be an open forum, um, but it is going to be feedback. It's going to be you giving us information and giving us feedback as to what is going to be the future of Open SUNY. So we got a way to do that in a minute, um, yep. but to do that, yep. now it's your turn. Now it's my turn. All right. Sorry. Didn't want to steal his slide there. Um, so um, again, welcome everybody. Great to see you all. And I want to just thank you in advance for um, this this session. And thanks um, to Alex for fitting us into the agenda so that we could use this opportunity to um, to get input from the community. I do want to start with a little bit of a quick review, and I will emphasize quick here um, that you know w when um, uh, I came into Open SUNY um, a few years ago, we launched a strategic plan. There was a three-year plan covering the years 2016 through 2018. We are entering the third year of that plan. We're in the third year of that plan. And so it is time to say what's next. And so I want to just give you a quick review of that plan and where we've ended up so you know that as we get into talking about what's next. So this is the vision that was part of Open SUNY when it was launched. This predated me, but I really think um, you know that it has served us well and um, and um, and probably um, something that we're going to continue to use as our guiding vision. This is our mission, which really talks about the kinds of activities that you see from Open SUNY. So if you are on campuses and looking for what is Open SUNY providing, it is those exemplary models, those high quality cost effective services, advocacy role, and then promoting, engaging, and research. And then across the bottom are the audiences that we um, that we try to serve on the campuses and in the community. So um, we try to be very clear about who that is and, and who we're serving. And uh, so grateful to see many of um, those audiences represented here. Um, you may remember that our plan was organized around a set of themes. So four themes, facilitating strategic growth, 
cultivating best practices, building capability, and promoting financial sustainability. And we had within those themes um, a short list of goals, and then, um, uh, and then we built those out a little bit more. What I want to say about these themes is, again, I do think that they served us well as we were trying to go from um, many of you will remember the um, digital DNA, that bubble chart that had a lot of stuff in it, right? So this really helped us kind of organize what were the kinds of things that we felt needed the most priority as we were coming into 2016. Um, and uh, you'll remember that was around the same time that the chancellor, the former chancellor, put up that goal of 100,000 um, 100,000 new online students, 150,000 um, uh, degree programs, up from 93,000. So big emphasis on growth. And, um, uh, so, um, and, and I think the others are, are fairly obvious. Um, so those were the themes and those were the goals. Um, we had a whole slew of initiatives, which I'm not going to go into in detail, but the idea was that at the initiative level, we would identify what our role was with that initiative, if we were leading it, if we were partnering with somebody else, or if we were really playing more of a support role, who the owner um, of the initiative would be, what the time frame would be for completing that within our three years, objectives and deliverables. Um, for the first time, I think we got real serious about metrics, um, uh, and um, you're going to hear a little bit more about that later. Um, and then um, we really tried to think consciously about who it was supporting of those target audiences. So this was really, um, you know, we, we tried to apply um, a much more project management-like approach to our work um, to make sure that we, um, uh, you know, knew what we were supposed to be doing, when it was supposed to be done, who was responsible, et cetera. Um, and I will say that I think that served us well. So. Um, where do we stand today? We had a total of 36 initiatives, um, and we have completed um, uh, 17 of them. We have 17 that are in process, but as we, we recently did a review with the Open SUNY staff of those initiatives, and what we realized is that many of them actually represent operational activities that aren't necessarily going to be complete. They're ongoing kinds of things, and so as we go into our next plan, we're going to figure out how we account for that. There were two that we actually put on hold because we, we, they were not initiatives that we owned. They were initiatives that we either partnered with somebody else or we were playing a supporting role and we couldn't totally um, advance them or on our own. So we decided to put them on hold because they were no longer um, a priority for the partner that we were working with. There aren't any that didn't get started. Um, so I feel like this is actually really good. And, um, and I want to just thank the Open SUNY team and the partners that we worked with for advancing so many of our initiatives. And I'd love to um, um, be happy to share in detail what those were, um, but that's not what we're here to do today. So, um, so what I want to do next is talk about, um, so we launched this plan in early 2016. Um, it's only two years later, but wow, has a lot changed in SUNY. So I just want to go through a, l a few of what those things are. So first we have a new chancellor who came in last fall. And if you listen to the State of the University System address, you heard her outline four themes around which um, she is placing priority for SUNY. I'm sure she's going to chat a little bit more about that tomorrow, but I think, um, you know, uh, so um, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, individualized education, sustainability, and partnerships. I think that relates very well to what we're talking about uh, when we talk about Open SUNY and online learning. So I'm um, not going to steal her thunder, let her talk a little bit more tomorrow, but I feel like she's laid a good foundation for, um, for SUNY um, that, that online learning um, will remain a priority. Um, we have an interim provost, Grace Wang, and if you haven't met her, um, um, you should try to meet her because she is um, probably one of the most impressive people that I have ever worked with. Um, she um, has stepped in when Alexander Cartwright left last summer and has really helped us advance um, many things that um, you know, we're not um, uh, moving forward as quickly as we would have liked. Um, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Performance Improvement Fund process. She has been at the helm of that. Um, with the executive leadership team and um, uh, really have enjoyed working with her. We are expecting um, uh, a new provost to be announced later this spring. Um, don't hold me to that if it doesn't happen, but that's what I keep hearing. So that will be yet more change, um, but um, you know, very different place from where we were two years ago. Um, most of you know Kerry has taken on additional responsibilities at the system office. He now is responsible for 
all of the um, enrollment um, and recruitment function, the application services center, and the financial aid function. So all those kind of front end pieces for, um, for students before they get to SUNY. Um, and that's really um, uh, helped create connections to the work we do in, in ways that really weren't happening before. And, and we're really um, trying to think about how we um, uh, um, you know, can, can look at that part of the, the um, work that we do at SUNY and how that ties into what we're doing with online learning in a much more integrated way. So that has been a very good thing. Um, SUNY OER Services was launched with $4 million investment um, from the state. Um, you know, that was huge. Um, it has raised all the questions again about what does Open SUNY mean? Where does Open, where does SUNY OER Services fit with that? Which are all good questions to be asking, but that's coming up again. And I um, want to thank um, Mark for um, being here today and others um, for tuning in. Much more to talk about there. Um, as I mentioned, we launched the um, Performance Investment um, Improvement Fund um, this year, $53 million investment in educational strategies, student recruitment and student success, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. So lots of projects being funded around the system in those areas. Many of them have implications for what we're doing here in Open SUNY, and so we are looking for those connections as well. Um, the Applied Learning Initiative had a reboot since we launched our plan initially. So this was not necessarily a new initiative, but brought, I think, more formal structure and definition to what did applied learning mean. Now all of your campuses have applied learning liaisons. There are definitions on your campuses for what qualifies as applied learning. And so um, you, know, you may remember that um, applied learning experience is one of those signature elements of Open SUNY Plus. And so there's been some reconciling of that. What does that mean? And we have to think about that more going forward. Um, Mary Lou is here. Um, we have new leadership in the COIL Center, um, and we've had some really fabulous conversations around how we collaborate and work more closely with the COIL Center, um, not just with Open SUNY, but with um, other um, areas within academic technologies and information services. So that's um, helping um, evolve our thinking about what we do and what our role is. Um, we had um, you know, a pilot um, on the recruitment side with um, a startup company, um, Ranku, who now is part of um, Wiley Education Services, to really jumpstart um, and uh, um, uh, give a boost to our lead generation for online programs. We're about to go into a new contract with them um, uh, uh, for three years. So there's an opportunity there to, I think, work with all of you in the community, on again, on that front end of the, the um, generating um, leads for programs. Um, and then finally, we made the transition to workplace for the SUNY Learning Commons. And um, I'm not taking credit um, you know, for that with Open SUNY because that was a, a very you know, significant effort um, across the system office led by the CPD. But I think it does have implications for how we communicate, how we engage with all of you, and how we can leverage that platform when we think about what we're doing in online learning. So, um, so lots of changes, um, big changes, and all of these have implications for us as we think about what the next phase is for Open SUNY. And so just wanted to lay that out for you. Um, we've shared all of that with the Advisory Council and had some really great conversations with them about um, you know, how we should be thinking going forward. But um, as Larry mentioned, we now want to do that with you. So that's my quick update, um, and I'm going to turn it back over to Larry now. Thanks, Kim. I thought Terry Keys talked fast. Boy, you're good. Um, so let's take a look um, right now at who's, who's planning our future, who's thinking about our future. Um, we have so many inputs, right? And in, in here at SUNY, we have so many great people that have been working on that. Um, I know as I was going through the, the Horizon report the other day and saw Alex's name as part of the Horizon team that, that was, was working on that project. Um, and we have Peter Shea, who does all of our, our research and, and stuff for Open SUNY uh, and takes a look at what the current state is of what we've been doing. Um, many of you know Brian Alexander, who's been out speaking at a lot of our SUNY institutions. I know he was a keynote. Where was he? He was at Finger Lake pretty recently, right? And he was at Broom? Yeah. Um, Educause, Edu Edu Ventures, all the SUNY leadership. Um, even Mark McBride, we could pr throw him in there if we wanted to. Um, but. You know, these are all people looking at things from the 30,000 foot level, right? They're all looking at lots of data, lots of information, uh, and aggregating some of the, you know, everything from uh, power research, 
uh, we're looking at we're looking at Civitas research. We're looking at the things at a very very high level. But in our conversations that we had at the council, we said, you know, all of that information is fantastic. But who's asking the people that are actually talking to the faculty and the students and, and dealing with the I can't log in conversations, and the how do I post something on a, a, a uh, assignment in Blackboard or, or, or something else. You know, that's really the people that are represented in this room. And so for us to um, help make recommendations uh, from the council, it really behooves us, <laughs> at least, to ask you the questions. Um, ask you, what do you think is gonna come next? Based on the trajectories that you see, down in the weeds, not at 30,000 feet, but down in the weeds, how do we figure out what SUNY and online learning and blended learning and all the things that we talk about in this room, what is that going to look like? And so we're going to do that today. Oh, I'm sorry, I was going to show you. And this is what the Horizon Report looks like, and there's dozens and dozens of things on this report of short-term and mid-term and long-term. Don't try to read it. You can, you can get this um, later. It's just there to make a point. Um, so the question then becomes, where are we going? Where is this all going to lead? Um, most of the time, this conversation happens around bagels, right, or around coffee machines outside uh, or in the hallways of, boy, why don't they do this at SUNY, or why don't they do that, or why can't we get them to do this? Or it happens in back channels, or it happens other places other than in conversations in these rooms. And so what we want to do is kind of ask you these, these questions. What do you think is next? So we've come to, up with four or five questions, and... You know, our first thought was, okay, we'll break everybody up into groups, and we'll get groups of four, and you guys will submit to the group, and, 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 and Greg shook his head no, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, um, instead, what we've decided to do is apply some technology, right? So we're going to use technology, and what we've done is we've created a, a Google Doc that we're giving you open share information to, and we're going to put up here, up on the board, um, that Google Doc, and we're going to put questions up. And what we want you to do is actually go into the Google Doc as a group and list your answers, list some ideas, list some brainstorm, right? It's a great way to do this where we can all like collaborate in one place, um, but we're going to do it in kind of an organized way so that we do one question at a time. Um, and a lot of what we're doing is thinking about the future. Where are we going? What are our barriers? What are our opportunities that we have for the future? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So bit.ly slash OS future is where um, you'll find this document. And right there, all it says right now, I think, is question one. I put the question in. Or Kim put the question in, so she's awesome. Um, so the first question we have is, um, so based on what you're hearing from your faculty, and this was a hot question in the council, too. Based on what you're hearing from the faculty, and, and, the, and with apologies to Peter, because I know this isn't like legitimate methodologies for getting information, and, and Kristen, sorry. Um, but uh, what do you think? What do you think will be the three top drivers, current technologies or systems? There's so many out there, right? There's so many things coming at us, the newest cool tool, the cool thing. Um, who is it that did cool tools? John, um, we used to do that all the time. John Prosh, right. Um, every year we had the cool tools presentation of what was cool. Well, that's what this is, kind of like you telling us what's cool out there. I've seen some incredible things with, with I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna start, but let's take five minutes um, and you just put in there, what do you think the top three drivers, current technologies or systems that are in place? Uh, absolutely. OS future. Yep. And your, the question's on the bit.ly right now, so, or on the Google Docs, you can see it there. All right, just five quick minutes. What do you think it's going to be? It's not like a test. You can talk to the people around you about it. Thank you. 
All right, well, we're not going to close that one. Um, we're going to leave it open. Um, so you can go back and add and edit as you will, um, which is the whole beauty of being open. Right, Mark? Being open, or it's available all the time, right? And free. So the next question. This is going to be a little bit faster. Um, how big are we? How big are we? How big is the, uh, how many people take classes online or in blended or alternative ways that are not traditionally lecture classes where they go to the classroom, they take lectures? Right now, about 20% of the students inside of SUNY, all of SUNY, okay? I know there's a lot of community college people here who have higher numbers than that and, and four year that may not have as high because for whatever reason. Um, but right now, about 20% of the people, uh, students in SUNY take at least one online class. Thank you, Kristen, for the data. I would amend that, though, that that's 2016 data. <laughs> yeah, so this is 2016 data. data. But that's all. <laughs> Just want to make sure it's yeah, yeah, um, So well, we're looking for the future, right? So that's what it is a little before now. Um, uh, about 15% across New York State. So the, all the privates, everything else you take into account is about 15%. And this call comes from iPads data, right? Uh, SUNY is from our data and the New York State numbers from iPads. Thank you. Um, sorry, I didn't put the reference at the bottom. <laughs> um, so, you know, I didn't put the directory up here, but what do you think it is? Considering what it's at your school, um, think about what it's going to be like at SUNY. I know that if our previous chancellor had her way, we would have been 100,000 more enrollments. I don't think we made that, did we? Um, and then in your school, where do you think you're going to be? Again, this is a pretty... So uh, as far as where those numbers are coming from and a lot more data, uh, Kristen, I think you're going to be addressing this issue the next time. And a lot of things we're talking about today are kind of like getting your brain started on the things that other people are going to be presenting about. So this is one of those things. So this should be pretty quick. It's funny, when I, was, when I teach face-to-face -face classes, I always start my classes off with an online discussion inside a Blackboard. So there's a, a kind of a sponge activity that we do, so and when people come by and see my class, and all the students are just surfing. They ask me why I'm not teaching anything. So I'm probably learning, I'm, they're probably learning more now than if I had opened my mouth. So. We got that up there, that's a pretty quick one. 30% of all the students nationally, Okay. That's based on We're behind. 2016 actually is. We have opportunity for growth like there's no tomorrow. Okay. We're constantly being hit with new things, right? If you were to talk to someone, if you were to talk to Alex and I probably about eight years ago, nine years ago now, you would have thought we would all be teaching in Second Life right now. <laughs> right? We aren't. No. I said you would have thought we all would have been doing that. Um, it was before it's time, come on, right? So, uh, considering that alternative realities and things like that, what's the next new thing? What's the next new big thing? If you look at the Horizon Report, that'll tell you what's coming next or what the, is for the future in three years from now and five years from now. But when you're dealing at our level where we're talking to faculty who are still trying to figure out how to bold in Microsoft Word, right? <laughs> And we're dealing with students that are coming in that are not any better at doing the same thing, right? In that environment, not for the early adopters, but what is the big thing? Not the next cool thing, but what's the next big thing that's going to be disruptive or be enhancing to our programs? This is a big one. This is an important one. Um, this is your futures hats right now. What is going to solve some of our problems? What are going to enhance some of our opportunities?
Okay, next new thing. It's interesting. If, if anybody who watched the television during the Super Bowl saw the commercial, I think it was an Apple commercial, um, where at the end of it, the mother says, you've got to get off your laptop. And she looks at the mother and says, what's a laptop? She's sitting here on an iPad typing away. Um, that should be interesting. Okay, here's Greg's favorite. What will our learning environments look like? Right now, we have a number of learning environments we use across the uh, enterprise. Some people are on Blackboard. Some people are not. <laughs> um, some people aren't using any learning environment, commercial learning environments, right? What is this going to look like? What will the learning environment of our future, starting in three years, and our contracts up at Blackboard, what is that going to be? This should be good. It's going to buy Canvas. It's going to buy D2L. And it's going to be Blackboard. It's just going to eat the rest of them. Oh, protect. Yeah. Oh, that would be fun. I like my Apple Watch. You should put that on there. That would be good. I'll, just send you, I'll, I'll, I'll copy this down, clear it, post it in workplace, and then. All right, so we've got all these positive things now we've talked about, all these future vision type things. Um, but we know, we absolutely know that it ain't easy. It ain't easy to have faculty change or students adopt or students. So one of the last questions is, what are the biggest barricades? What are the barriers we have to implementing these successful systems or new systems, whatever you want to call it, across the university? 
What are our biggest problems? Oops, sorry, someone. <laughs> I took your thing. And money's a given. <laughs> Okay, not dealing with problems. Um, <clears throat> so in the, in the theme of e pluribus unum, where out of many, one, uh, we are, we have been accused of being a confederacy of 64 different campuses. We've heard that phrase so many times. Um, and we have had some really good success coming together, especially this group, probably as a model across SUNY for people that work together on projects and, and making something happen. Um, so under the last category for additional inputs, this isn't really in the form of a question. Um, it's kind of, it wasn't gonna be anything that you wanted to talk about, but I'd like to focus this time on <laughs> what can SUNY do about this? What can we do with 64 campuses to come together, use this power of community that we have, um, and make some of those things happen, right? How can SUNY help that happen? How can SUNY help you make that happen? We'll put it that way. Um, and that's a little harder. Put a title on this right there. Put something there. Yeah. Okay.
Dahlia yeah, thing of changing the whole scene, creating options for universal student degrees. <laughs> no, no way. Our, our, our school would revolt. <laughs> taking credits from like broom. Right. They don't even like students that transfer in. The faculty bitch about transfer students all the time. Oh, the transfer students from the community colleges. And I'm like, okay. I couldn't imagine. And not at Binghamton. We only accept about 30% of our applicants. Yeah, so we know. We, That's why they're so snooty about it. They hate accepting the transfer students. They hate it. The seamless transfer was like, oh my gosh. Like, grow crazy. <laughs> okay. Wow. So I heard there was over 60 people in editing this document. That's phenomenal. Um, that's a lot of information. So as you're finishing up, um, what we're going to do with this document is basically lock it once you guys finish this, this morning. Um, we'll lock the document down um, and put it up probably in the workplace somewhere. Um, I don't know, I'll let Aaron figure out how to share everything up to the community. Um, and then what we're going to do is at the end, after you've heard all the presentations and, and had some time to think about what we did today, um, on Friday, um, Alex will, uh, I'll be working with Alex and we'll reopen this document um, with all blanks, right? So that all the new stuff that you think about, this is gonna stay open for a little while today um, so you can finish off. Um, but all the stuff that you hear when Peter presents and some of our keynotes present and Kristen presents about what the, the current state is versus the desired state, We'll, we'll open that up and let you put your new thoughts in there if anything comes to your mind, just to kind of follow up on this process. Um, and then we'll make it available to you. You'll, you'll get it in the workplace. Um, and we will take that at the council and try to uh, analyze the data that you've put in and, and use it as a working document for us as we're giving advice uh, to the leadership of SUNY as we move forward. I had no idea it was going to be this. The, the, the Google Doc idea came through for the end, and it was phenomenal. I'm really happy to see how well this is working. Um, is there anybody that wants to, outside of the Google Doc, um, bring to our attention something that stood out to you as people were putting up? I saw a lot of smiles as like, oh, what a good idea, um, as this came across. Is there anything that really stood out in this project or this process um, that you hadn't thought of before? See, now you have to talk, and that always gets harder <laughs> to actually say something. No cool thing? Okay, that's fine. Um, what we're trying to do is so complicated, and I'm not going to just talk to talk for talk's sake right now. Um, but there are so many inputs that are possible. Um, I wanted to make sure that we heard from you. We heard from the people that are actually doing the work. Um, and we certainly have. And over the course of this pre over the course of this time, over the course of this conference, thank you, um, we're going to get more. We're going to have a lot of hallway conversations. And as you get those hallway conversations, share them. I put this into this document. And great ideas come sometimes not in the hallway, but they come at you know McSorley's bar down the street and you after work here sometimes. And that stuff can come in here too because this is an open document. It's going to be an open document. All right, I'm um, a little early, but. What's next, Alex? Is uh, who's Aaron? Are you monitoring? No, no questions. All right. If there's any questions, again, if you want to talk to people that are on the committee, anybody else who's on the council, raise your hands again. John left. Ryan's on it. Um, a lot of the people that we have are not necessarily us. You're on it. Do you have? No, I'm not. On it. No. Do you? <laughs> I've never seen you. Do you have a? a Oh, somewhere where I can see the people that are on that advisory council? Yeah, we'll put that up. I Googled up. it, I couldn't find it. Yep. 
we could get that up there. We don't have it right now. That's behind closed doors. We're, 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 yeah, we're doing a revamp of the OPT website. Okay. So we can get okay. okay. We'll try before we finish the conference to have a list for you, yeah. show you okay. so you can talk to on your campus. Yeah. No other questions? Any questions online? I don't know who's monitoring the questions online. Um, Aaron Aaron's got no, you have nothing from? No, okay, great. <coughs> All right, then, is it break time? Um, well, just transition. Okay, transition time. You're welcome. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to take a couple of seconds for us to